What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina and today's video is going to be on the equivalent air depth equation and I'm going to show you just how simple it is to use it. Now the reason we need to understand the equivalent air depth is simply because if we're not diving say a standard breathing gas like 21% or a NOAA-1 or NOAA-2 mixture which is 32% and 36% nitrox which are the two most common blends then we're going to have to be able to convert it back to a 21% O2 mixture to be able to calculate that dive. Now what do I mean by a standard a NOAA 1 and NOAA 2 most training agencies and for the purpose of the video I'm going to be using SSI dive tables most training agencies will have three sets of dive tables they'll have an air blend a 32 per 6 uh, or 32 percent blend and a 36 percent blend and the, the cool thing about SSI is they have it all on the same chart but if you're not using 32 or 36 percent or even 21 percent for that matter you're going to have to be able to do this equation to convert it back so you know what your maximum bottom time is for any given depth and for any given mixture. Well, what we're going to look at today is an 80-foot dive while using 40%. And before I go any further, we need to understand when I say the word percentage, I also simply mean decimal point. So if I say percentage, I mean decimal. If I say decimal, I mean percentage. Because a lot of times, if you're taking a test, say a nitrox test, you'll see the question say in a 40% blend, well, what that question is really asking is a point four zero blend. So over here I've kind of got it wrote one way where it's 21% but I use decimal, 32% I use decimal, 36% I use decimal, but here I got 40% and I got a percentage sign. So the percentage means the exact same thing as the decimal and that's going to be very important when you plug in the numbers into the equation. So the equivalent air depth equation is simple to, to memorize, if you will. There's actually three parts to it. We have a bracketed section that has two parentheses. So we're going to call this part one. This is part two. And then part three is anything outside the bracketed section. So when you do an equation like this, you need to remember your order of operations. Please uh, excuse my dear Aunt Sally, you know, your parentheses, your exclamation areas. So all that needs to be completed before you come to the outside. And this is going to be very important to make sure your calculations come out correctly. So the equivalent air depth goes as follows. We simply take the fraction of nitrogen or the partial pressure of nitrogen within the gas that we're breathing. So if it's 40% oxygen, I know it has to equal up to 100%. So 100 minus 40 will simply be 60%. And remember, when I said percentage, I also mean decimal. So if my fraction of nitrogen is 60%, what I'm really saying is 0.60. So you take your fraction of nitrogen and you're going to divide it by normal atmospheric nitrogen, which is 79%. And then I'm going to come over here to this part of the equation and I'm going to take depth and I'm going to add 33 to it, which is a normal atmospheric pressure, if you will. So 80 feet being my depth and I simply add it to that 33. So now that I've kind of got those numbers plugged in, I can work it down and then once I finish the bracketed area, I can come back over here and get my total answer. And once again, what I'm looking for is, is my maximum bottom time at 80 feet while using a blend of nitrox or a blend of enriched air that I simply don't have a table for. So let's start doing the math and if you will pick up your calculator, I'll also say this, if I can round up a number, I will. So if I have say a 0.9, I'm just gonna round up to the next greatest number. So plugging in that little bit of information there, I have all the variables that I need to effectively do the equivalent air depth equation. So I have 0.60, I'm gonna divide it by standard uh, nitrogen partial pressure, if you will, and that's gonna give me an answer of a 0.76. And then I'm gonna to have to do this part of the parentheses before I move on, so I have a depth of 80 feet, I'm gonna add an atmosphere to it, which is 33, and that's gonna, of course, give me an answer of 113. Now I'm still inside the bracketed area, and since this was part one and this is part two, the parentheses says I need to times the two together. So I'm gonna simply times 0.76 by 113. And of course my answer there is 85.88. If you wanna round up to 86, you can as well. 
And now I've effectively done everything with inside the bracketed area. Now I can come over here to this part of the equation and finish it out. So here it says I need to take away that atmosphere, which happens to be 33. It's almost simply minus 33 here. And I will go ahead and round up here, but if you follow along with the calculator, you should get the same answer. And it says my answer is 53 feet. And what that tells me is, is the equivalent air depth to 80 feet while using 40% nitrox or enriched air is actually 53 feet. So I'm gonna come back up here and I'm gonna write 53 feet as my equivalent air depth. So when I use the standard air tables to calculate an 80 foot dive, I'm actually gonna calculate a 53 foot dive to get my maximum bottom time or my no decompression limit or my Doppler limit. So let's see what that actually looks like. Since we have converted this back into the equivalent air depth, we simply take the equivalent air depth of 53. So I'm gonna come down and I'm gonna try to find 53. Of course, I've got to round up to the next greatest, which is 60. And it says at 60 feet, I have a total bottom time of 50 minutes. So I can take my little question mark here. I can erase it and write 50 minutes. So that tells me I can go to 80 feet while using 40% enriched air nitrox and I can stay for a total of 50 minutes given that you have the air supply to do it. And then I can actually calculate what my pressure group afterwards would be. So if I go to 53 feet for 50 minutes, 53 once again rounds up to 60. If I stay a total of 50 minutes, I simply scroll over to 50 here and that's gonna give me a pressure group of course of H. So I'm gonna write that up here as my ending pressure group. Guys, that's how simple the equivalent air depth table is. Anytime you do a problem like this, if you have this part memorized or at least wrote down, all you've got to do is simply plug in the numbers. A calculator definitely helps and it is okay to round up decimal points to the next greatest number so you can round up as well. Simply plug in the variables, get your answer, and then you can come back to the question of whatever test you're taking or whatever dive you're trying to plan out and effectively and safely plan out your dive. Once again, as a recap, the equivalent air depth is so that if you're using anything other than say 21%, 32% or 36% and you don't have a table to factor that, of course you can use the equivalent air depth equation and go back to your standard air table and safely plan your dives. Guys, I hope you found this video interesting. If it helped you out, smash the like button for me. If you have any questions, please put it down in the comment section below and I'll try to answer it the best I can. Guys, I will be making a series of videos using the equivalent air depth chart here, so stay tuned for that. Guys, as always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business. Guys, we really appreciate you watching our videos. If you liked it, make sure to give us a big thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, simply hit that subscriber button for us and make sure you hit the little bell to turn on all notifications. If you want to see some other cool videos, make sure to click these links here. They could be scuba tips, they could be diving videos, search and recovery videos, or gear reviews. Once again, guys, we really appreciate it.